Hi, welcome to another quick tip from Think Creative TV. Hope that you enjoy this, and if you do, it'd be great if you could subscribe and click the like button below. But let's get started with our tip of the day. Okay, so let's take a look at a deeper dive into some of the features of the keynote updates that just arrived in July 2020. And the one that I'm really, really interested in is the ability to have video play across a series of slides. So not really having to worry too much about, you know, the timing of when the, the video might start on the next slide. I can have one video throughout almost the, well, throughout the entire presentation if I wanted to and then still have my slide deck. Now from working in higher education, thinking about remote learning, I think there's some real positives here, things that you can play around with as you're utilizing this to create resources for students, but also for students to you know, be able to demonstrate their knowledge and understanding in a remote way, but still have that personal touch because it's always good to, to actually engage with the presenter in, in things. So let's take a look at, at how that might look. Let's imagine this is a presentation that I want to go through around just some of the basics of, of pedagogical design, etc. I could obviously just do a voiceover of this and, and put it out to my students and, and have them engage in it in that way. But but there's something that's obviously missed, um, that, that personal interaction with the lecturer, the... Um, you know, the ability to, to see their face. And of course, there's an accessibility feature of being able to see people's faces as well, you, having a bit of an understanding of what it is they're trying to explain. Um, and if this was a student who benefited from lip reading, then, you know, the video would still going to be there for that student to be able to follow along as well. Now, traditionally, that would be quite difficult to put together um, in a keynote presentation with a video on each slide, because traditionally, as I change the slide, the video would stop. But with the update, the video doesn't stop anymore, it actually stays in place. So you can start to play around with how you can use that as a, as a support tool for students. So let's take a look at what it looks like. I've already created um, a bit of a video to go along with the slides here. Fundamentally, what I would do is you know, record myself talking through, you know, an element of my slides and just chunking it down into small pieces. And then uh, that video is now stored on the device. And I'm just going to add it then to the presentation itself. So if I jump into um, my photos and videos and just grab that video that I took a little bit earlier. And I can just add that onto the slide. Now I'm not going to want to have this full screen the whole time. There might be elements of the video where actually, do you know what I would do want it to be full screen? I might want to be doing some live demonstrations um, of me in, in situ here where I am at the moment. Um, and then go back to the slide, you know, so there's that kind of, you know, I, I could add that live element to the presentation. It might be that I want to do a demonstration of something that goes along with the presentation. Well, you know, I can I can add that in and do it in, in one take if needs be. So let's just put that video, uh, let's put the video over here just so um, it's in situ. I'm then going to copy that video and I'm going to paste it onto the other slides. And for the purposes of this, I'm going to move it on this last slide just so you can see that it plays all the way through. So I'm not doing anything else to that video at all. And what I'm now going to do is play the presentation and let the video play as I'm going through. And then you'll see that I can jump from slide to slide, and you'll see that in terms of the animations between the slides, but the video is gonna continuously play. So let's take a look. Hello class. So in this video, we're gonna take a quick look at just some of the pedagogy behind how we can get the most out of using technology in our classrooms. So let's start with Bloom's Taxonomy. Now we've shown you Bloom's Taxonomy before and we've kind of explored the different levels as we go through this. Um, um, and we need to take notice really of what the current education system uh, favours in terms of testing and assessment and, and what it is that we're trying to get out of our students. And traditionally, and certainly from when I was in school, that was this bottom level of remember. And we need to start to consider, you know, that if deeper thinking and deeper engagement happens as we move up, you know, what are the things that we're challenging our students to do in the classroom and how do we move them up to this pinnacle where we want to talk about creativity? And actually, you know, what does creativity mean in this context? So if we so you can see there, and I, I kind of jumped through the slides towards the end to just show how the video plays, even though I've moved through the slides. And I think there's there's something in this in terms of how we can start to recreate our resources for our classroom 
um, and also how students can use this as a way to virtually present but still be present in the presentation and not just have their voice. Um, I know from higher education this is something that a lot of our students were asking for a few months ago when they were presenting their work because they like to be able to demonstrate um, and use their body language in order to help them present something otherwise it can become a little bit stifled and, and your presentation tone just becomes like reading a script as opposed to actually presenting and the presenting skills are still important but obviously if we can't present in person you know this is this is a really really useful alternative and like I said uh, I really you know even just as I've been talking about this now making this video I like the idea that I could also do a visual presentation um, of how to do something in the room it could be that I'm making something you know that actual hands-on element and just place that into my presentation have that video run through all I would simply do there is let's imagine I've gone to an additional slide and although in this video I'm not you know doing anything I, I could just make this video bigger okay so all of a sudden now I can have that focus on what's happening um, and I'm still in control when I play through the presentation. I'm I'm in control of the presentation, match it to my voice. Um, and then, you know, I could always uh, just do a screen recording of this and then send it out to the students. Um, it, it just opens up the opportunity. So there we go. Just, just something to consider, really, in terms of making videos for your learners, but having that personal touch of the video in the screen at the same time.